Right now, as you're watching this, molten rock is rising beneath one of Earth's most dangerous volcanoes. The ground is literally swelling. Toxic gases are pouring out at rates scientists haven't seen in over a decade, and thousands of families have just discovered their homes sit inside a kill zone that expanded overnight. This isn't happening in some remote corner of the world. This is unfolding in the Philippines, where half a million people live in the shadow of a mountain that's killed before and is preparing to kill again. The numbers coming in are staggering. Sulfur dioxide emissions have hit 40,970 tons per day, nearly 10 times normal levels. Over 90 pyroclastic flows recorded in a single 24-hour period. The evacuation zone suddenly expanded from 6 to 8 kilometers, nearly doubling the danger area without warning. And here's what's keeping scientists awake. The volcano isn't following any of its previous patterns. Mount Mayon rises from the Philippine landscape like something out of a dream. Its perfect cone shape has made it famous worldwide. Photographers travel thousands of miles just to capture its symmetry. Local artists have painted it for generations. Tourist brochures call it the world's most beautiful volcano. But that beauty is a trap. The same perfect shape that draws admirers also creates the perfect killing machine. Those steep slopes, averaging 35 to 40 degrees, turn falling volcanic material into accelerating avalanches of death. The symmetry exists because Mayon erupts so frequently, it constantly reshapes itself. Since records began in 1616, it's exploded at least 49 times. No other Philippine volcano comes close to that deadly frequency. And the communities below? They've built their entire lives on top of previous disasters. In Kagzawa, families farm soil enriched by the same eruption that killed 1,200 people in 1814. The old church bell tower still pokes through the ground a tombstone marking where an entire congregation died. Schools operate within kilometers of the summit. Hospitals treat patients in the shadow of previous destruction. Over half a million people have chosen to live within direct reach of Mayon's fury. They know the stories. They've heard the warnings. They stay anyway. The volcanic soil produces incredible harvests. The mountain brings tourism money. And besides, their families have lived here for generations. Where else would they go? But on January 6, 2026, everything shifted. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology raised Mayon's alert status to level 3. The official language was clinical. Increased tendency towards hazardous eruption. The reality was immediate chaos. Military checkpoints appeared overnight. Mandatory evacuations began. The 6-kilometer permanent danger zone, a boundary that had defined safety for decades, was suddenly enforced with armed guards. Then came January 9th. And with it, a terrifying discovery. Scientists observed something that shouldn't have been possible. Pyroclastic density currents, those superheated avalanches of gas and rock, were traveling farther than any model predicted. The flows racing down Bonga Gully on the southeastern flank exceeded distances that the safety parameters said were impossible. The six-kilometer boundary that had protected communities for years? It wasn't enough anymore. The mathematics were simple and brutal. A 6-kilometer radius covers about 113 square kilometers. An 8-kilometer radius covers roughly 201 square kilometers. The expansion nearly doubled the threatened area overnight. Communities that went to sleep believing they were safe woke to evacuation sirens and military convoys. Families in Santo Domingo, Daraga, and Camelig suddenly discovered they'd been living inside a death zone all along. Let me explain what makes pyroclastic density currents so terrifying. According to the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, these flows have killed nearly 60,000 people between 1500 and 2017, more than any other volcanic hazard. They race down mountainsides at over 100 kilometers per hour. The temperature inside can reach 700 degrees Celsius. At those speeds and temperatures, there's no running, no hiding, no surviving. At Mayon, these currents are now cascading down three major gullies simultaneously. The Misi on the southern flank, Bonga on the southeast, Basud to the east. On January 9th alone, scientists recorded 90 distinct pyroclastic flows in 24 hours. Residents in neighboring towns watched the mountain glow red through the night, incandescent rivers of death illuminating the darkness. Historical records show Mayan's most powerful flows have reached 8.5 kilometers along the Bonga Channel, the exact channel now carrying material beyond the old safety zone. The expansion wasn't precautionary, it was reactive. 
the volcano had already rewritten the rules. Inside the evacuation center at Camelig, the reality hits differently. Maria Santos sits on a cardboard mat, everything she owns stuffed into a single plastic bag. Her home, just four kilometers from the summit, now sits well inside the expanded danger zone. She's evacuated before, in 2018, again in 2023. Each time she eventually returned home. Each time the volcano eventually quieted. But this time feels different. The gymnasium shelters over 200 families. Children sleep wherever they can find space. The air carries that distinctive sulfur smell drifting down from the summit, a constant reminder of what's building above them. Military personnel patrol the perimeter, maintaining the invisible line between survival and catastrophe. Through the gymnasium windows, Maria watches the volcanoes glow. She doesn't know when she can return home, or if there will be anything to return to. We have seen Mayon angry before, she tells me, her voice barely above a whisper. But I have never seen so many people so afraid. The fear stems from what scientists call the invisible messenger, sulfur dioxide. When magma rises toward the surface, dissolved gases escape through cracks and vents. The more SO2 a volcano emits, the closer fresh magma sits to eruption. For volcanologists, these readings often predict disaster better than earthquakes, and Mayan's readings have become apocalyptic. On January 16, 2026, instruments recorded sulfur dioxide emissions averaging 4,970 tons per day, the highest measurement at Mayan in 15 years, higher than the crisis levels during the 2023 eruption. For context, Mayan's normal emissions hover around 500 tons daily. Current readings are nearly 10 times that baseline. The implications chill even experienced volcanologists. Elevated SO2 means fresh, undegassed magma is actively rising through the volcanic conduit. This isn't old material settling. This is new fuel arriving from deep within the Earth. The unknowns multiply. How much magma is accumulating? How fast is it ascending? Will the system release pressure gradually or catastrophically? History provides context but no comfort. The 1814 eruption remains Mayon's deadliest. Pyroclastic surges buried five towns on the southern slopes. At least 1,200 people died. Ash accumulated to nine meters deep in places. The Baroque church at Kagsawa vanished beneath volcanic debris, only its bell tower still visible today, a monument to catastrophe. In 1897, another violent eruption killed 350 people. Pyroclastic flows reached the seashore at Santo Domingo. In 1993, an unexpected explosion caught farmers in the danger zone, killing 79. In 2006, typhoon rains mobilized volcanic deposits into lahars, rivers of mud that killed at least 1,266 people across the region. But here's what's different about 2026, ground deformation. Unlike the 2023 crisis when gas emissions rose but the mountain remained relatively stable, Current monitoring shows Mayon's eastern and southeastern flanks physically swelling. GPS instruments and electronic tilt meters detect the mountain inflating from below like a balloon being filled with molten rock. This combination, high gas output, accelerating dome growth, and edifice inflation, represents what volcanologists call triple escalation. Each factor alone would trigger alarms. Together they signal a system under catastrophic pressure. The transformation happened frighteningly fast. On January 7th, scientists recorded 162 rockfall events and 50 pyroclastic flows. A new lava dome appeared at the summit, dark and growing, pushing aside older material. On January 8th, webcam footage captured the dome clearly visible, feeding continuous flows down the slopes. Ash clouds drifted across Legazpi City, affecting thousands. Then January 9th arrived like a nightmare. 90 pyroclastic flows in a single day, 150 rockfalls incandescent material streaming down three gullies simultaneously, the crater glow visible to the naked eye from towns below, the lava dome actively effusing and collapsing, each failure sending death racing downslope at over 100 kilometers per hour. At that velocity, communities inside the danger zone would have minutes to escape, not hours, minutes. The growing lava dome represents a special kind of terror. Unlike dramatic explosions, domes grow slowly, thick, viscous magma accumulating at the summit like toothpaste squeezed from a tube. But domes are inherently unstable. As new material piles higher, gravity and internal pressure eventually exceed structural strength. Then comes collapse. And dome collapses generate pyroclastic flows with virtually no warning. 
Unlike explosive eruptions that build through detectable seismic activity, a collapse can occur when monitoring shows stability. One moment the dome broods at the summit, the next, tons of superheated rock cascade downslope at highway speeds. If Mayan's dome collapses catastrophically, the destruction would unfold in phases. Within five minutes, temperatures exceeding 200 degrees Celsius would sweep everything within three to four kilometers of the summit. Human beings exposed to these conditions die almost instantly, not from burns, but from inhaling superheated gas that destroys lung tissue before pain registers. Between five and 15 minutes, the flows would reach the eight kilometer boundary. Even at this distance, temperatures remain lethal. Structures would be obliterated by impact forces and buried under meters of volcanic debris. Roads would become impassable. Any evacuation not already completed would be too late. Beyond the primary flows, secondary disasters would cascade. Ashfall would blanket the region, contaminating water supplies and collapsing roofs. When rains arrive, as they always do in the Philippine wet season, volcanic deposits would mobilize into lahars. The 2006 lahars triggered by Typhoon Durian killed over a thousand people using material from eruptions months earlier. The debris now accumulating represents future lahar potential that will persist for years. What terrifies scientists most is that Mayan isn't following its usual script. During the 2023 crisis, similar pyroclastic activity occurred but without the ground deformation now observed. Scientists described 2023 as an effusive eruption of largely degassed magma, dangerous but limited in explosive potential. The current crisis shows pronounced swelling of the volcanic edifice, indicating fresh magma intrusion under extreme pressure. Three parameters escalate simultaneously. Sulfur dioxide approaching 5,000 tons daily, dome growth accelerating with continuous collapses, and GPS data showing inflation across multiple flanks. Scientists have tracked this anomalous deformation for over 18 months, with particularly pronounced swelling since May 2025. This triple escalation means the system contains far more energy than in 2023. Whether that energy releases gradually or explosively remains impossible to predict. Volcanic systems don't operate on human timelines. The pressure building beneath Mayon could release tomorrow or accumulate for months before reaching critical failure. In Albay's evacuation shelters, families wait for answers that may never come. Scientists maintain round-the-clock monitoring through 16 seismic stations, continuous GPS networks, and gas monitoring equipment. They watch for lava fountaining, sustained volcanic earthquakes, or sudden deformation changes that would trigger Alert Level 4. Alert Level 4 would expand the danger zone to 10 kilometers or more, potentially displacing an additional 50,000 people, a logistical nightmare officials describe as no joke. For now, the volcano remains at Level 3, but mountains don't recognize boundaries drawn on maps. As of the latest bulletin, Mayon continues exhibiting all indicators of heightened magmatic unrest. Over 3,500 individuals from approximately 1,000 families shelter in 13 evacuation centers across Albay province. Schools remain suspended. Agricultural lands lie abandoned. Economic losses mount with each passing day. The director estimates if this crisis follows 2023's pattern, activity could persist for six months or longer. But he acknowledges current conditions differ dramatically from 2023. The volcano is still deciding its next move. Across Albay, communities watch the summit glow each night. They check evacuation routes. They keep bags packed. They wait for signals they hope will never come while knowing Mayan offers no guarantees. The question isn't whether Mayan will erupt, it's already erupting. The question is whether this eruption remains manageable or whether the mountain is simply gathering strength for something catastrophic. And right now, no one on Earth knows that answer. The perfect volcano continues its deadly performance, beautiful and terrifying in equal measure. Half a million people wait in its shadow, hoping that this time, somehow, will be different. But the mountain makes no promises. It never has. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.